How to Make Money Online Blog Launch. Good afternoon, everybody. Gil here, and welcome to our noon session. You should be able to see a little pop-up there in my image. Uh, whenever I do talk, you'll get the talking head and screenshot uh, in the after production uh, once we get this placed uh, onto our site, which we are currently building here step by step, right? And um, if you can hear us, go ahead and confirm via the Google Hangout. There should be a chat box here on the right-hand side, all right? And we also do have uh, a couple of guests that are going to be popping up on these sessions. As always, uh, our co-host uh, Lauren will be catering to our group coaching and our uh, business uh, clients where they do get to email in their questions, action items, have marketing campaigns reviewed, and um, we do give those priority here on these sessions along with any direct questions that you guys uh, might have, especially on any recent topics and items we had covered. Before we get into today's uh, session. Um, we'll definitely get the mic test underway here, but also wanted to remind you guys there should be a little pop-up right above or wherever you're watching this. It could be on YouTube, it'll be in the description, or in the actual website or blog site. Um, there will be contact information on how you can send your questions in. Join our subscribers list and stay on top of the latest tips, updates, and um, additional training sessions that we host here online. Uh, part of joining the list, you do get a complimentary copy to our affiliates uh, 101 membership community. Uh, we are waiving the monthly fee and you do get a nice bird's eye view, a good overview on how affiliate marketing works. A great place to start if you are just getting started learning how to make money here online and if you don't have a product, service, or company all right, so that's a pretty cool concept there. There are uh, reports, PDF texts that you can go ahead and consume, read whenever you do have time. That are looking for audios and videos, they are available in there as well. And again, just a thank you gift for joining our list, checking our content out. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, Lauren, go ahead and do a mic test on your end. Uh, let's see if we can uh, make sure we can hear you clearly and. Uh, see you as well. Hmm. Perfect. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. Looks like we can see you and hear you just fine. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and... All right, where are we here? Go ahead and uh, go sh uh, share your screen there. Uh, get the screen going. Um, if you could give us a quick recap on some of the items you covered over the last couple of days. Yesterday's session was fantastic. I think it definitely uh, connected with a lot of the uh, viewers and people that were checking out yesterday's training uh, session. So just a quick recap on some of the concepts that you had shared uh, over the last couple of days. And uh, let's go ahead and transition into today's training session. Awesome. Uh, well, my segment, again, is the get found aspect um, of the webinar, which means it's awesome to have a website, but if you're not going to get found, you'll never make money off of it. <laughs> so uh, with that being said, what we've been talking about the past couple days um, is blogging and um, also the idea of being everywhere. Um, whether they're searching in Google or on Facebook or something, uh, you want, if you're everywhere, not only does it build your brand, and your credibility, it also pretty much guarantees that they're at least going to check you out um, and you'll definitely have a heads up over your competitors. Um, so as far as blogging goes and just putting yourself out everywhere, uh, we also talked about syndication strategies and making sure that you are showing up, um, you know, everywhere. <laughs> Sorry with that one. Uh, Anywho, and then before that we talked about the different powers that you need to have and whatever it is that you're putting out, whether it's videos or content, um, but appealing and keeping in mind your target avatar. Um, so that being said, uh, yesterday was kind of a basic on what to do um, as far as how to get your hmm. blog posts out. Lauren? Um, and, yes. Uh, if you don't, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. If you can uh, pause for just a minute or two, I think we're waiting for some of the attendees to let the um, let the feed kick in. Um, Gene, it. I see you on the session. Pat, welcome. If you guys can see us, hear us clearly, uh, please go ahead and confirm in the chat box. We're gonna wait another minute here uh, before Lauren moves on. That way, you guys don't miss anything um, 
that we are covering. Uh, but just to reiterate, Lauren has been reviewing or, or sharing some great tips and practices on content syndication. So your um, how to maximize uh, traffic and trends that are going viral, uh, how to make sure your posts are uh, catchy and relevant, and um, she's going to continue to expound on syndication strategies uh, here today. So let's go ahead and wait another minute or so here. Make sure everybody can jump onto the session, and then we will reopen uh, it here in a second. Awesome. Hey, Gil, would you be able to put a link in the chat so that I can um, send it to some people? Not so they can be admins, but just so they, they can jump on and view it. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, copy paste that here. Awesome. It will be in the chat. I am going to uh, enter that in. Go ahead and check that out right now. And uh, welcome everybody once again. If you're just joining us, you've got Gil here and Lauren. Welcome to our noon session. If you are interested uh, in building an income producing website or how to make money online, you are in the right place. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Covered a couple key concepts yesterday. And uh, for those of you that have been looking for the pop-up balloon or a way to subscribe and join, uh, get onto the list. There will be a um, details in the description of this YouTube post or on the blog site that this content will be featured in. All right, Lawrence, I'll go ahead. Uh, Gene confirmed he can hear it well on his end. Let's go ahead and um, jump right back on track. And we're going to have a few people joining us on here as well. So I'll take care of that while you uh, go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Ooh. Uh, hearing a lot of weird feedback. Hold on. Give it a second. All right, you should right. be good to go. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so, anywho, just to recap, what I'm going into uh, today is the power of guest blogging. We did blogging last time um, and how to start aspecting your blog. We talked about a uh, jumping on trending information so it doesn't necessarily apply to your blog specifically but jumping on that whatever's happening in the news right now can help you uh, one people are going to share your information and get it to go viral and also an added benefit is showing up very high in Google you know even if it's temporarily catching traffic that way before the really big you know Huffington Post and things like that provide information on things so sometimes you know us being the little boat uh, we can you know speed boat around and get in front of the things before the big Titanic comes around <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so hold on one second all right. While you go ahead and do that, welcome, Anthony. We see you jumping on the session, a uh, active member of our accountability group here. So great to have you on the session. Any specific questions, go ahead and type it in the chat box. That way we can keep you moving forward. Um, otherwise, Lauren, looks like we can see your screen. Perfect. Um, so today is just going to go and continue the power of guest blogging, especially if you don't have a lot of um, visitors to your blog right now. Guest blogging can be a fantastic strategy to get more eyeballs um, from the people that already have a following on their blogs. Um, and so there's two different aspects we're going to look at, not just putting it into... Um, oh, hold on. I have a little singer in the background. Kayla, no singing. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the Little Mermaid, but she's very really happy. That's so awesome. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the fun of working from home. Uh, anywho, so you can get more eyeballs from their list, um, whoever it is that you're guest blogging for. And another aspect to look at as far as con um, getting blogging is looking at blogs that are already ranking on Google and then seeing if you can be able to uh, put a post on their blogs. Those ones can sometimes be a little trickier because if they're already ranking in Google, they're probably bigger brands, maybe not so much open to a newbie guest blog, um, but hey, it doesn't hurt to try. <laughs> Great. So for our dentist, just did a really quick search. This is just a good way to find just general blogs, and I just put in a Google search saying dental blogs. Um, so I found a bunch of different blogs. There's even ones that are just for guest blogging uh, down there at the bottom, a dental guest blog. Look at that. Um, most of these... Um, definitely had some good information. So if you're a dentist, hey, you're not sure how to start ranking, just, you know, this would be a good starting point just to see if there's actually a blog already for your industry. Um, so that would just be a good way to get started. There you go. So that one, specifically a blog for dentists. So it's different than, you know, with if you're a dentist, you can have a blog for dentists, kind of by dentists, 
or you could have a blog and find blogs that are for, you know, average, you know, non-dental people written for them by dentists. I'm sure there's also blogs for non-dentists um, written by non-dentists, just, you know, it would be like if I was talking about my experience in teeth whitening or something like that. So there's different types of blogs, and you would base your content based on what the actual blog is that you're finding. Cool. Another way to do it is um, searching for, that was specifically targeting blogs. What I tried for my birthday party business is just typing in, hey, fun ideas for kids' parties. More of the key words that um, my target avatar would be searching for and then seeing if any blogs come up. So, you know, this definitely is a very popular keyword um, if you're in the party industry. And if you notice, the second thing up here, it's actually a blog that shows up already second on Google. So whereas, you know, my animal party business might, might not be able to rank organically yet, I should say, <laughs> for this keyword, um, but it's the aspect, hey, find somebody who's already ranking for these keywords, um, and then see if you can do a guest post for this blog. So um, my next few slides are basically going and pursuing this blog. Honestly, when I did some research, it wasn't the best blog that I was going to find, um, but it just it serves for this example. Okay, so once I clicked on that link, this is her blog site. Um, so this, a good thing to point out is, look at this, 25 cheap fun ideas to make your child's birthday special. Your blog post title can be very keyword rich and that also is what helps rank it in the search engines. So not only, I mean, that one was fun ideas for kids' parties, well, this is, you know, cheap fun ideas. So that's how this was able to rank is be just from the title in her blog. So she already has a popular blog, but the title's what got her showing up. Um, so what you can kind of do, a great power would be, is figure out what keywords you want to rank for, make that your blog post title, and then go try to do a guest blog for someone who blog who's already ranking. So then you're finding the credibility from them, putting in your keywords as the blog post title um, in this thing, and ideally then your information would be found. Um, so cool, so that's a definite thing to say is, hey, this more style than cash doesn't necessarily relate to kids' birthday parties, but it is a very good ranking website, and obviously if she featured something on birthday parties, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to contact her and say, hey, I loved your birthday party blog post, you know, would you like another one, you know, specifically on, hey, here's some cheap fun ideas if you're going to go with an animal-themed birthday party, and then I can write a post on that. Um, so just kind of ideas to get, you know, your head spinning <laughs> or the ball rolling as far as ideas that you can use. Um, so then the basic thing is you found a blog that you're interested in. It's already ranking. So how do you start to make the contact with it? And that's where we're going to go from there. You can use the contact form on websites, however, most people are finding you actually have much better results and communication if you go through their Facebook page. Um, so in this content, um, rather than trying to contact them on there, and I've tried that before, didn't have any good results, Facebook, I'm definitely getting a whole lot more responses um, by contacting people on their Facebook. Um, so this is the Facebook page from that website. And then you're like, okay, because that blog post and her blog didn't seem very active. That article was from 2012. However, noting down here, look, she shared a link eight hours before I took the screenshot. So you can see that she's much more active on her Facebook page than her blog page, and that's definitely another aspect of why you would want to um, contact somebody on their Facebook versus their blog website. So then you go about, well, how do I contact them? Ideally, people also have aspects where they're going to put who the, owns the page and stuff like this. I couldn't find that information clicking around on here. So unfortunately, my only option in this case is to just message the page. It would be much better if somebody has, you know, if you're able to tell who's the owner of the page and contact the owner directly. Um, but in this case, I wasn't able to, uh, she didn't have, or whoever is it, uh, did not have their information on there. So you can go ahead and send a message to them on Facebook. 
And here is some samples um, that I've ha you know had other people recommend as far as how to make contacts for guest blogging. If you don't know the person, I can just kind of read it verbatim. I'm not sure if you can get a sense of it, um, but this is what somebody did. The biggest thing is you want to make sure that you've already checked out your their blog, um, like their actual blog website, before you go to contact them because you'll end up looking kind of stupid and they're also going to think it's a waste of time. So make sure that you recommend um, and reference the fact that you've already been on their blog. So this says, hey Matthew, I just checked out your marketing more on blog. It's awesome. Big respect for your internet marketing skills. You praise them, kind of starting to get rapport. Um, do you ever have guest bloggers write for you? I've got a new post that I want to build some link popularity for and would love to throw a guest post your way um, on any internet marketing topic you want. Obviously, this was a blog for internet marketing, not kids' birthday parties. Um, but then he goes on to say, hey, if that sounds cool, let me know. I'll write and you can approve or disapprove and just let me know. I look forward to chatting with you. So that's also that you're giving them the option when if they say it, then it's whatever it is that they write um, you know, you're giving the power to the person who owns the blog um, to be able to approve or disapprove. Um, more like the internet marketing stuff, a lot of people don't like if you have a lot of links in there and it's very spammy. So you want to be definitely aware of the fact that you're having really good content for your guest bloggers. Um, a good rule of thumb on that, um, and that's kind of what I've done in my party business, is hey, you know, if it's a guest blog, you know, maybe don't spend four hours and write your best content ever. Write good content, but like I said, maybe not your best content. Um, you know, when we're looking at subcontracting things, um, you know, for some of the agents that eh, maybe we're not so crazy about, I tell my employees, maybe I sh <laughs> shouldn't reveal this, but I tell them, do a good job. But do like, you know, an A minus job, but I expect you to do an A plus when you're representing my brand. <laughs> So, but anyways, you're still doing a good job. It's just called like guest blogging. Do a good job, but save your great job for your blog. <laughs> you def yeah, high, good content. You know what I mean. And um, but at the yeah, definitely save. Uh, put go the extra mile. You know, uh, on your on your personal content and um, on your on your main site. Right, exactly. but, you know, when you're first starting out, you, you know, um, you might just have to uh, put it out there. I think it'll also challenge you, or, or anyone in general, where hey, you know what? That's like my Mona Lisa. How do I get make something even better? And then the wheels start turning, and you, you know what? The next day, you get hit with this even better idea to even build on and uh, come up with something even cooler. Yeah. So exactly, and they say kind of the rule with guest blogs is you know give yourself an hour. Um, and go ahead and do it and get it out there, but don't spend you know hours and hours and hours on it. So it's just give it your all for an hour, and at the end of the hour, you're done. Um, so that way it doesn't become a time suck because after all, it is for somebody else and not going on your blog. Um, another thing too is let's say you know where it's about the approve or disapprove. If they don't like it um, or they want you to change some stuff, hey, guess what? You're not married to that person. You can go and shop your uh, guest blog post around to other bloggers that have a similar, um, uh, not jargon, uh, you know, a similar um, type blog. So that way you can also shop it. I mean, you don't want to, you know, obviously give the same content to each post. However, you know, if somebody's not crazy about a post you've written, don't take the rejection personally. You know, if you're publishing a book, a publisher doesn't like it, well, you're not going to just throw the book in the trash. You're just going to go shop around for a different publisher. Um, so you can definitely take that same attitude when it comes to guest blogging. If you're not getting a response you like, hey, it's no big deal. Shop around and see if you can find somebody else. Worst comes to worst, just put it on your blog and you already have content for you. Another sample is if you already are friends with the person on Facebook, um, you friended them, maybe, you know, I have a lot of contacts on Facebook, I'm not sure who might be blogging, that would just requires extra background um, and Facebook searching, which we can go over, um, you know, on a different segment. Um, but this is a great one, and it says, uh, for somebody that already is a connection of yours, it says, hey Josh, long time no talk, I was just checking out your blog, it's looking awesome. I'm down to throw a killer post up for you and promote it on social media. I'm just looking to build some link popularity to a new blog. Win-win. Let me know. I can probably get some good traffic to it as well. 
Um, so in this content, obviously, it's it's another internet marketing kind of thing. If I'm talking about birthday parties, I'm probably not going to use that jargon. Um, but also just keep in mind on Facebook, especially when it's um, to somebody you're friends with, you don't want to have too much of a formal feel. Formal can actually come across as kind of spammy or you're kind of skeptical. So this um, person, even if I didn't personally know them, but we're just friends on Facebook because you know we're interested in the same things or something, make sure that how you're talking to them is how you would talk in real life. Um, and your personality comes through because the biggest thing is people are aware and can pretty uh, red flag, uh, you know, insincerity or you know somebody being kind of fakey or too professional or too relaxed. If I talked like this, everyone would be like, "Uh, yeah, I don't talk about. I'll throw up a killer blog post for you." <laughs> That's not how I talk. Um, so just make sure that your personality comes across when you're making these contacts um, for guest blogging. And then if you want to go super ninja on the stuff, add more juice, add more fuel to your blog post. So we already talked about um, on previous sessions, you know, the ideas of how to start getting it to go viral. This today gave you a little indication of how to do some guest blog posts um, and get more stuff out. And if you even want any more, you can do a little bit of both paid and free aspects um, in order to totally get your syndication across. Um, so Fiverr is an amazing resource. Um, if you just go ahead and Google in this, or Google, uh, well, in, in Fiverr, go ahead and search um, Facebook shares and look for five bucks. Um, you know, here's high rating people. They'll deliver 800 Facebook shares for your photo, website, blog, post, etc. That's not bad for five bucks. Um, same thing here. You know, there's 75 shares and tweets. Um, so there's different things that you can definitely look at. And start adding a little bit of, uh, you know, juice or fuel to your post if you really want to get it um, going. Another aspect um, I haven't personally looked into it, um, but I think it's definitely something to consider. This thing it's called Empire Avenue, and it's totally free. And basically, it's people exchanging and working together to help themselves uh, gain an audience. Um, so they kind of trade back and forth as far as shares, likes, um, ex commenting, etc. Um, and it's you know we can do a different topic on it once I've gone through it. Um, but there's just kind of being aware that there's other avenues, and this is free as well if you want to get it out there and have more people start promoting things. I'll just chime in on that one with regards to Empire Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are just getting started, guys, I would definitely put Empire Avenue towards the middle to latter portion of uh, your task list or to-dos. Uh, the reason why is um, that can easily very well be a huge time suck. Um, <laughs> it is really catchy uh, and you just kind of get lost tinkering around with the website setting things up so uh, definitely put that one on the back burner um, be, uh, and apply the uh, the initial tips right before you start going uh, into Empire Avenue. Cool? Exactly yeah so if you haven't you know if you're not even blog posting yet you know, get it out there first, then look at guest blog posting because you don't want to be guest, um, do even going into guest blog posting unless you already have a blog and have made your own posts because that would be kind of silly. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, definitely take this step by step, and that is why it's mentioned last. And yeah, I've been warned it's a very big time suck, and that's why I haven't looked into it yet because <laughs> I have enough sucking my time. <laughs> now, uh, Tim's got a question, right? Um, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, blogging to get more activity to your website. Do you have a yes, um, Tim? <clears throat> when you, for example, I know you are in the real estate niche, right? So you can find blogs that talk about home improvement or something in your niche of real estate, and you would create a post for um, uh, something that is real estate based, sharing your five best tips on X, or here are three things that you can do for free to get X. Right? Um, or here's a nice little checklist. Okay? Or, cool. I know uh, a lot of people are also very, uh, like real estate investors are very aware of this new Dodd Frank Act. So you can do something like we talked about yesterday. And if you just do a blog post compiling little snippets from other sites um, that are talking about Dodd Frank, that would also be a really good blog post because it's something that people are interested in and it's happening right now. 
Exactly, exactly. So you do the blog post, right? You get the blog post on somebody else's site. Since they have a larger audience and following, they'll see and read your article. They'll promote your particular post. And somebody like me, once I see it, hey, you know what? I did dig this content. Let me take a look at the uh, the author, check out their site. And so now I get introduced to your company, your blog, your website, uh, and I can go ahead and sign up, become a subscriber, or uh, you know, continue to browse around there. So again, additional eyeballs and exposure uh, onto what you're doing. Uh, report the critical, mis you know, one critical mistake, three free things you can do, get results in X number of hours, um, just to kind of jump start or get the ball rolling. I'll share more on the um, on the headlines aspect. Uh, we're going to use that in our content creation, and I'll break that down here uh, afterwards. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much it um, as far as, you know, the the initial aspect of getting mm, you guys All right, before you, give me like two minutes. I'm going to uh, jump off here. Uh, just give me like two minutes. Cool. I'll wrap it up on here. One second. Cool. Um, so the biggest thing is where do you spend your time? Because, um, of course, your time is the only and most valuable asset that you uh, cannot get back. Um, so it's basically create some content. Don't overspend on it. The biggest thing is to go share it. Um, and a good starting goal is 10, 10, 10, which means go for getting 10 likes, 10 comments, and 10 shares. Um, and remember, all of this just goes back to the fact that you're branding yourself as an expert. Um, so yes, content, share, and then look at your goals and really start getting it. Um, for mine, yeah, it's the hardest part, and that's what I'm, I'm focused on right now is getting those shares up. Um, so I'm working, I have my 10-10, well, I'm working on my first two 10s, but definitely my, me personally, I'm working on getting my last 10, which is the 10 shares up. And that should do it from my end. <laughs> All right, I am back. Co-hosts and presenters need to use the restroom too. <laughs> um, any questions or clarifications on that, guys? You should be able to see my screen here uh, in a minute. Let me go ahead and touch base here with some of the attendees that just popped in. Welcome if you are just joining us. This is our daily Monday through Friday, 12 noon Pacific time, uh, daily internet marketing training. There's two components to this segment. Um, the first is our group coaching, accountability, and active subscribers that are following along step by step. They do get the opportunity to email their action items, send in their marketing plans. We'll take a look at it, evaluate it, and give some feedback. Some people just need you know, a fresh pair of eyes on it, or there may be an error or a, a question that they're hung up on. So the goal is to be able to keep you moving forward. This is part of an ongoing series, and the basic theme is how to make money online, how to build an income producing website um, and a uh, what I like to fondly call a, a money blog. <laughs> the, uh, the tips, practices, and trainings and strategies that you see on these sessions are applicable to any market, market niche, or industry and profession. Uh, a couple of days ago, we talked to an internet entrepreneur that has an online store for motorcycle parts uh, and accessories. Um, we have real estate investors that check out these sessions so that they can find ways to generate more traffic and leads to their website so that they can talk to more motivated sellers, they can talk to people interested in listings or provide credit repair. Uh, Lauren has a business that deals with uh, children's parties with live animals and like a reptile uh, you know, theme. Uh, we have people that are in the video game niche that are uh, making a part-time and a full-time income. So it's applicable to any market, any niche. Um, and if you guys have any questions, go ahead and write it in. We had a couple of good talks after our session uh, yesterday, uh, especially on content um, syndication. Now, um, with that said, we'll go ahead and continue on our ongoing series here uh, on how I was able to generate up to 20000 in the month of January and piecing together that website step by step. Okay, There are detailed walkthrough videos on how you can get a website set up uh, and we've just got done um, getting a theme installed and plugins. So again, there's a step-by-step -step process in order for you to be able to follow along. Now I will share my screen here so that 
uh, looks like somebody uh, in our subscriber group is looking to jump on board the session and is having a little bit of some trouble. By the way, guys, we ha uh, some of you are having some troubles connecting to these daily and regular um, sessions. Could be a couple things. You might have to clear your cookies in your browser, um, or when uh, our session starts at 12 noon. Right. If you log in before 12 noon, you will be directed to the most recent replay. Okay. So, if you are watching a replay and it is now 12:10, 12:15, um, go ahead and refresh the browser so that you can get the live signal and end up in this training room. Okay. Uh, new link. Either webinar. Okay, so let me try type that in. Hopefully, they can find their way here uh, into the room. All right. Um, now, what did we? Uh, Let's jump into our section here today. Now, for those of you that are just getting started, you know, learning the internet or learning how to make money online, um, I, we want to be able to provide you guys with a good foundation of understanding the components of the website so that you have the confidence to create your own posts, to build your own website and manage and maintain it moving forward. Uh, we're putting together a very simple bare bones um, approach right uh, and and try to get it as simplest as possible so that anybody can duplicate it and implement it and test these concepts uh, for themselves now if you're already a, a medium to advanced um, internet marketing professional or internet entrepreneur um, let us know some of the content we're going to be digging into you may have already learned but you may also pick up a few things so definitely uh, uh, grab a pen and pad take some good notes and if we're looking to review more advanced stuff let's have a conversation uh, we uh, on how we can continue to optimize and take your business to the next level I had a fun conversation yesterday um, with a uh, with a 55 year old grandma who is going to start building her own website and I'm really excited about that we're actually going to have her joining us regularly on these sessions since she's implementing uh, these strategies herself um, and she's going to be doing it she's committing to you know a couple hours in the day uh, to getting this done um, so she's using her mornings uh, to prep her action items and uh, once we are on the live session she'll be able to review um, her work and we can also give her real-time feedback on how that uh, on you know her action items okay so where are we at now on the website um, we have hosting we have a site we got theme we got plugins installed now we are in the launching the blog phase um, but we're more in the pre-launch okay and um, uh, w when it comes to the pre-launch um, guys uh, everybody is pretty much chomping at the bits to start posting stuff on their website and sending traffic to it okay uh, I want to let you all know do not do not skip this part right if you already have a functioning blog or a website you will be tempted to skip the pre-launch and launch section of this particular series do not okay do that if your website isn't making you money it's likely because you haven't properly set up the blog to generate income Okay, it's like a store, right? If you don't have your products uh, stocked on your shelves, if you don't have a good layout in order for your customers to navigate and weave through the aisles, it's going to be very difficult for anyone to buy anything or to, you know, to to just get through your store to find stuff. So we want to make sure that our store, our website, is has a good layout and it's properly stocked with the right products and uh, and offers. Okay, so. What is this checklist? The pre-launch check uh, sequence is a checklist of actions that you need to take in order to create a blog that makes money. Oh, it looks like Chris was able to find his way here uh, in the session. Fantastic. Lauren, the screen is coming out okay, yes? It was. Um, now we should be, see. we should, it should be back. Okay, now it is. Yeah, it was and then it disappeared and wait. Uh, yeah, it should be good now. Okay. Hold Give on. a second to load. Yep. Now I can see your PowerPoint. Okay. So it's a pre-launch 
is a checklist, right? You need to take in order to ensure that your website's going to be income producing, you put yourself in a good position. Now, it is going to be the longest section of this series, okay? Because it is important for those that are starting a new website, you'll definitely want to do all of these initial preparations before inviting traffic and sending people to your particular website, right? So, when do we uh, invite traffic to the website. Well, we'll invite traffic and we'll send people to our website and blog during the actual launch phase. First, let's make sure we are in a position to make money off of that particular traffic. All right? Okay. Yes, we are having an extended session today. It's going to be one of those marathon sessions that I like to call where a large um, anybody that's following along, and I'm surprised, some people are literally right on the cusp um, implementing stuff, and so I want to get to the launch phase as quickly as possible, so I do want to cover as much in the pre-launch here today, so we may go longer than our, our regular time slots. These will be broken down into smaller segments later on, but if you guys can't stay on for the whole thing, that's okay. Uh, I definitely recommend you do, that way you'll be able to uh, ask your questions right now and make sure you're in a good spot uh, implementing your pre-launch phase. Okay, so editorial planning. Okay, this is where in this step we're going to start the process of thinking about what type of content you are going to publish and how often. All right, you're going to use a spreadsheet which you'll find in the resources section to help you build this out. Right, we will not be building a full on calendar yet. Okay, of posting on the first, second, third, fourth, all throughout the days of the month. We'll get to that, but in the meantime, we're going to start with a, uh, a basic spreadsheet that we can fill out so that we have uh, a basis for the main calendar. And we're going to address the main calendar later on. Once again, don't skip this step, otherwise you're going to have trouble moving forward and you'll have to go back and it's like trying to turn the Titanic, all right? Um, so let's avoid that. Um, publishing frequency, okay? Basic question that we always get asked is how often should you do it? Now, there's no question that more content is better, but with that said, we do have to root your posts and your content uh, frequency in reality and with your current day-to-day -day commitments, right? Here's the big question. Okay, how often can you reasonably post outstanding content to your particular blog? Simply put, the internet's already filled with average content. There's a ton of information out there. What it's sorely lacking is outstanding content, right? Um, some of the best stuff that go viral and have the biggest uh, launches and sales these days are the look over your shoulder approach. That's why we tell, um, if you are still wondering, thinking about what your blog or your website is going to be about, then our, you know, the uh, a good way to just get started and streamline it is a website about your success journey, your financial freedom journey, or your, uh, your, your journey as you exit the rat race, and how you are building out uh, an income producing website sharing your challenges, what you're learning, what you're doing on a daily basis, all right? But again, we want to make sure that you do have a realistic game plan. Are you going to post once a week, twice a week, every day? What is your schedule like, okay? How often can you reasonably, uh, oh, well, we already went over that. Now, I can't determine your posting frequency. Only you can do that. Definitely give it some thought. Uh, at the very least, I do recommend posting three times a week, uh, and you'll be spending anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes max on your posts, right? Um, that way, life, uh, you know, you can get along with all your other financial and day-to-day uh, -day commitments, and it's not going to take over your entire day, because that's happened to me before. I'm trying to work on a five-minute video, and it takes like two hours, right? So th again, game plan, execute, and you'll be able to follow through, keep moving forward, okay? Now, with that said, if you are unsure, start with posting three times per week and you can adjust from there. I am working off of a daily uh, posting schedule uh, and I'm spending 15 to 45 minutes off of a Monday through Friday creating new content. That is another great bonus and feature that our group coaching and accountability students like. It's because we do have a done for you component where our main hub produces and creates content and you'll simply have to you know, repost or place 
place that on your particular site so that you have fresh content going on ongoing on a regular basis and I'm going to show you how you can leverage and fill in uh, those days where you cannot or do not post uh, but how you can still have content coming in so if that's something of interest to you uh, there will be contact information in this YouTube post or the main website so that we can help get you started um, and uh, you can maximize the done for you component right okay so editorial planning we addressed publishing uh, I'm sorry publishing frequency now there's different contexts uh, context type Anthony I know you're on this session this is the part where uh, definitely you should dial in um, so that you get the idea you asked a really good question the other day should I do podcast YouTube you know how that's going to play out right um, before you go you know before anybody bolts off and darts let's get this pre-launch phase uh, taken care of correctly so that we can just go a hundred miles an hour in the right direction. Uh, content types. Posts come in all shapes and sizes varying in the vehicle. There's text posts, paragraphs, articles, videos, YouTube videos, Vimeo videos, Vidler um, video posts, right? Whether you create your own or you create a PowerPoint um, and talk in the background, just do a voiceover, uh, or you can even do cartoons, and we'll have different vendors that would allow you to be creative, but also get these uh, get these done in a timely manner. Again, 15, 45 minutes max per day. All right. There's also audio that you can do right um, and of course images you will want to have different forms of content or, or uh, content types so that as Google indexes and and uh, reads your websites it sees a nice mix of content video audio and image why do I like video the best out of all of this is because if you create a 15 20 minute video uh, on a daily basis you can have somebody rip the audio so you now have a compilation of mp3 files you can start a podcast off of that you can provide that as a lead magnet for everybody and uh, once they extract the audio you can also have somebody transcribe everything in the video so now all of a sudden you now have this nice little series um, that you are building from one simple video Right, and again, um, our group coaching and our done for you components that uh, you know that is something that they benefit from, um, and uh, and we can use as lead magnets or for content production and creation. Okay, so those are your content uh, content types. Now. With regards to the length of the post, there are long posts, there are short posts. We break them down into two types. One is your pillar post, okay? Pillar posts are lengthy concepts, detailed posts that explains one of the core messages of your website and your blog. I'll share some examples as we move forward. A short post is a quick, punchy post uh, that supports your core concepts. All right. So the way we've been able to build out these websites is to have a nice little system or format where when you do one piece correctly, that actually carries over into the rest of the website so that you're not uh, having to repeat yourself or you have to keep doing over working on the different components of your website. I, like, I definitely like to maximize my time to the best uh, of my ability. Uh, content sources. All right. We know what content types are there. They come in long and they come in short. The content source, here's where it gets fun, right? Most people think you have to create all of your own posts. That's not the case. Of course, there's always going to be a you uh, component. You are creating this content in the form of a review, give your insight, share your feedback, find something that you stumbled upon. You are the author of the post, right? And then you can also do uh, curation. Okay, and this is content that you have aggregated from other sources. Often, but not always, you will provide an analysis of the curated content. So, for example, Lauren shared, um, uh, gave a good case study, an example of somebody that. Um, was put an article together on uh, when GoDaddy systems and servers crashed. Okay, this person is not an IT expert, but what they did was they went to three major websites, uh, TechCrunch, uh, and a couple of a big uh, authority newsfeed IT-based sites, and they got certain snippets from those articles, compiled it into one article, and shared. Well, guys, you know, GoDaddy went down today. Here, uh, you know, here's some feedback from some of the major uh, uh, players and updates that's going on. 
All right. So they wrote like three sentences, but they had like three other paragraphs that sounded smart from third party sources, and that can be your post for the day. So you can curate content, give your feedback, analogy, or share your insight. Uh, last but not the least, there's a guest post. Lauren just talked about this earlier, where you can volunteer to post on somebody else's blog, or you can invite somebody else to go on your blog, okay, and, uh, and post results or post an article for example, right? So pressure's not all on you, okay? You can get help, you can outsource this kind of stuff, uh, and there are other ways to have uh, your content creation. Okay, where is my slide? And we are on the next slide. Any questions on that one? So far, so good? Yep, so far, so good. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, action item. Okay, action item. So let's assume you'll be posting daily, about 20 to 45 minutes maximum. Okay, here is an exercise or a nice little template that you can take yourself through, fill out, so that you can start to come up with, um, with your editorial planning or a basic guide or template that you can follow. Okay, so let me share that spreadsheet here with you. Let me just click on that. These will all be in the resources section of, uh, of the post or wherever you're watching this, so you can access these files and fill it in. Okay, so here's a snapshot of my Monday through Friday schedule. All right, and um, all you have to do is start to fill in this piece of, you know, when you're going to post. I'm going off of a five day Monday through Friday schedule. Okay, and uh, the different things I need to think about is, okay, when am I going to post? That's the day of the week. Length, am I going to do a short post, long post? And vehicle, we talked about the vehicle, what type of post am I going to do on that day? And then who is going to be the source? Is it me? Is it a guest? Is it curated content? And last but not the least, the category of my website. What am I going to be talking about there? What are the main concepts uh, that I will, uh, what's my main topic on that particular day, right? So you just have to fill this in based on your particular schedule and um, what you can do uh, in terms of your content creation. Again, it's got to work with your schedule and your other commitments, right? So here's an example of mine. So on Monday, I'm going to do a long post or a pillar post and I'm going to use video text. I'm going to create this post and I'm going to talk about building your subscribers, right? So this way I can just follow this little plan along the way. It is, you know, it can be subject to change, but at least now, again, we take the guesswork out of it. Uh, we're able to uh, get it organized and move forward with a clear game plan. Right? So what you want to be able to end up with is fill in this sentence right here. On Monday or the day of the week or month, I will publish a blank post using a certain vehicle created by the source about a certain category. All right. Um, oh, Gil, I just have a quick question with that. Um, with your schedule, now it was a variety of different... Uh, can you go back to the Excel sh screen again? Sure. Um, with that one, so is it good to have a variety of different topics five days a week, um, and then, or would it be better to have a theme for the week? You know, there's different ways you can go about that. That really comes down to uh, personal preference, the time that you have on your hands. If you're only posting once a week or once a month, then it'll definitely help out to have like a theme for the week, right? That way there's some sort of, you know, continuity uh, in getting the content out. Um, cool. And then would this be something, like if that's yours, would it be, would you change the categories each week? Or every Monday you're going to talk about something on building subscribers and then every Tuesday traffic. Uh, is this something that you would want to keep consistent each week if you're doing it or you're going to be reevaluating yeah. this each week? I would say when you're first starting out, get something, fill out the template, let the week run its course and then review you know, review that experience, right? Are you able to do, you know, stick with that game plan? Is it too long? Maybe you don't have enough content, so you have to make some adjustments. These categories are going to be the main concepts for your particular website or blog. Now, mine is about how to build an income generating website. Um, if you are in the kids' parties, you can talk about uh, kids' party tips, you can talk about bloopers, you can feature party planners, you can uh, feature 
venues on one day. Um, but to, to start, just fill it out. You don't have; it doesn't have to be perfect for those that are just getting started. And then I'm going to take you through the actual editorial calendar. So this is just a platform into a full calendar. Uh, game plan and you'll see how we will build on that um, here shortly. I do like to rotate concepts um, because my goal is to get this done in 30 days or less. Um, also uh, in terms of clarity let me bring you guys so this is what you want to end up having right so some sort of schedule uh, or at least a guide uh, again that you can follow. Cool okay thanks so much. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's see. On Monday, I'm going to publish a pillar concept. I'm going to use video text. I am going to write it and building uh, about building your subscribers. On Tuesday, I'm going to publish a short concept posting image text created by curator about certain traffic. So if you can run through the whole week, then you'll know uh, what you'll need to tweak. Uh, anything you'll need to change, maybe a category, uh, you know, you no longer want to write about that or you found that it's not, you know, it's not getting a lot of searches online so you may want to change it, right? So um, you'll see what the full calendar looks like and it'll help uh, make it clear for everyone, right? Remember, this is not your editorial calendar, it's merely a planning document that would be used to build your full-on calendar, but at least this way you're starting to think and get more organized so that you can move forward and not get stuck because this this is where I would say 90% of the people definitely get stuck, right? Now, how do you determine the categories? You kind of, we, we kind of touched on that earlier. Lauren kind of uh, started to, to, to move in that direction, um, you know, during her questions, right? Um, determining your categories. There's two uh, factors that I like to take a look at. Is One is the depth and the authority, right? So your categories is provides your framework. It's going to be heavily reliant on the niche that you pick. So Lauren is in the party planning, kids, uh, you know, uh, party niche. Um, the categories that she'll pick is, is based on that particular market or niche. Content categories can give a lot of depth to a site and certainly help build your site's authority with the right choices. Um, your content categories are the framework for your authority site, so it is definitely important. This helps keep everything uh, under that one unique brand and that way you're not talking about a million things and you can have a laser light focus and cater directly to your particular avatar. Avatar. If your site is going to be mainly comprised of blog style entries, then uh, it definitely makes no sense to have a category named blog. Instead, divide them into categories that would make sense to the person viewing your site or the topics and content that they are looking for. So for example, on the blog, on the website that we're going to be launching here, right, it's going to be how to make money online uh, GPC, for example, right, uh, my categories are going to be about building subscribers and a list, traffic conversion, SEO, uh, my story and social media. My story is definitely going to be a very important part to it uh, in order for me to in order for you to connect to your audience and again that whole follow my financial journey or my, on my way to success what you are doing in the trenches to get out of the rat race documenting that experience is absolutely fantastic um, and uh, and content that is that really builds up a fast subscriber list and gets noticed out there uh, in the marketplace. So for my particular niche and industry, here are the top things that people are looking for, right? Or the complementary topics and categories. And um, I'll expound more on this a little bit later. So these titles do a good enough job of describing what's underneath them in the overall hierarchy of the website. And it gives contributors uh, a way of determining if their content is a good fit for the website, right? Uh, if I'm inviting people um, to blog or to write articles and make videos for my site, they can go on there and they can decide, you know what, it makes sense. I see how we can, uh, you know, we can work together here uh, as opposed to landing on the website having no clarity and um, nobody wanting to do business with you or um, uh, create content. Right now, creating a content uh, inside of WordPress will create a uh, a page on your blog that um, gets aggregated to the different categories. That way, it's nicely filed, um, and it makes the site more friendly to both your visitors and your search engine spiders. Right. So again, getting it organized and being able to uh, 
uh, to move forward and, and, and launch the actual blog since we're still in our pre-launch phase. So um, we'll talk more about our pillar posts, right? What's involved in a pillar post, right? I like to break all these once we're done breaking it down, great. Uh, I want to make sure you guys do understand what's going on here so that when we start optimizing the site, driving traffic, everybody is on the same page, right? So a pillar post. What's an example of a pillar post? How do you know a long one from a short one? Okay. Um, before we start driving traffic, again, we need to fill our website with content, with meat on the bones. You don't want to have a corner store without goods to sell on the shelf or anything that you can offer. Okay. So our goal here is to have 10 core concept posts. Okay, 10 core concept posts based on specific desired keywords. All right, these are 1,000 to 2,000 word posts, and uh, a couple of examples on here that I'll give for you guys. Um, a core post would uh, so that it's not too generic. Okay, uh, how to get paying subscribers on Facebook fan pages. So I can do a core post on that which would definitely be much better than how to get subscribers. Too broad, right? How are we supposed to talk about getting subscribers in a 2,000 uh, word post or less? So be specific so that you can have a clear post. And even if we're just talking about how to get paying subscribers on Facebook fan pages, we can still build on that concept and do other posts related to that, right? But again, not too generic. 2,000 words or less. Where will you get these concepts? Okay, You can get these concepts the same places where you're going to get your lead magnets. Think 10 things. You can use a keyword tracker and also put yourself in the mind of your viewer or your audience. What are people searching for in your niche time and time again? Now, in the niche or space of how to generate an online income and how to make money off of a website or blogging, those are the most common things that people are looking for. Those are the related topics that get searched and that's why those are my main categories. So think about what your audience is searching and that's going to be the concepts that you're going to be writing about. Right now. There is a, a concept that I like to refer to as an evergreen post, so we'll talk more about that here. An evergreen post, um, these are, and you can use this again as a guide and you can swipe it and use it in any industry, okay? This is content that people can go back to and read over and over again, right? Now, a couple of examples here are a one page guide to party planning, right? A one page guide to uh, teeth whitening. A one page guide to um, you know to green uh, to green products and teeth whitening or the one page guide to talking to motivated sellers okay other example is the ultimate guide which has a strong perception of value the top 10 list a resources and tools list a checklist a cheat sheet or introductions, right? An introduction to online marketing, for example. Uh, top three mistakes that you should avoid when getting started. So these are examples of your pillar posts that you're going to have on your particular site. Okay, so far so good. Everyone still with us? Lauren, any clarifications on that, especially for the group, uh, the group coaching and the accountability uh, students? Nope, no questions coming in on that. Whew. All right, so that is pillar posts, right? So when we refer to pillar posts, that's, that's exactly what we are talking about. Now, since we have a small editorial planning, right, we've got one week down here. Okay, we've got an idea of what our pillar posts are going to be about, right? The content that we are going to develop uh, and fill our website with. We can start to build our editorial calendar. If you are going to run your website like a media company, you need a functioning editorial calendar. And if you follow these instructions, you will come out on the other side with a well-designed editorial calendar. So let's go ahead and 
get this thing going and I'll break down what is involved in this editorial calendar right now again this segment of our pre-launch is one of the longer uh, portions of it um, but you will thank me later that you took the time to go through this so that you are not totally scatterbrained uh, and you end up with a um, with, with, with a hodgepodge of a website <laughs> and if it's a hodgepodge people will not know how to buy or how to subscribe or or uh, get be able to get your uh, your offers out all right so here are the portions of the editorial calendar I do have a sample uh, link here so that we have something to reference let me pull that one up here you will have access to these files in the resources section Okay, so here's an example of an editorial calendar that I'm working on that I'm building out. All right, um, it's got the publish date, okay, and uh, the publish date is basically when the post will go live on the website. Okay, length, how long is this post? Long, short, pillar, is it a core concept? What are we going to talk about? What type of vehicle am I using? Is it going to be in the form of a video, audio, text, um, or an image, right? What are we going to use? The source, who's going to create that post, right? And uh, category, of course, this is going to be what the post is going to be about on that day, okay? And then SEO keyword, this is going to be crucial for ranking your site and getting found uh, for your product niche, company service, or your affiliate uh, product that you are promoting. Okay, so the SEO keyword that you want to rank for. Okay, so for example, if I'm focusing on building your subscribers, I can talk about how to build your subscribers. Using Webinar Jam, right, which is a tool out there in the marketplace. I think I did over I did 60 subscribers in a week uh, testing this out and um, for somebody that has no list by using webinar jam you may be able to you know use that as a tool to build your list fairly quickly and I'm gonna be sharing tips on how you can do that so I'll be writing that particular post right so my guide right here's where it gets even easier uh, my guides gonna be the ultimate guide to how to build your subscribers list using webinar jam alright and uh, a sign date some of these are self-explanatory, but I'll go into it anyway. The date the post was assigned to the writer. Okay, um, so if my if I decided today that I'm going to fill in, you know, this was assigned. Uh, I went ahead and assigned it today. Uh, today is the third, and this post is expected to go live on the seventh or Monday. All right, and then there's going to be a deadline on there as well. Your deadlines could be sooner. The post is supposed to go live on Monday, uh, but maybe I set a deadline for Sunday. Again, holding myself accountable, making sure it gets done, or even if I have uh, a guest or getting, uh, you know, having somebody else contribute to the session, it helps keep everybody accountable and ensure that it gets done and we keep moving forward. All right. So this is going to be filled out. Uh, I've got a 30-day uh, that I work off of, and you're going to see how that one plays out um, here for your. Uh, uh, how that applies to you and how you can start to fill this out there for yourself, right? Okay. Uh, any questions on the editorial calendar um, so far? I know, Lauren, you're updating and you'll be updating your site and your blog, but any clarifications with regards to the editorial calendar? Just that it's fantastic. You know, I've been working on blogging, but I've never had a schedule in that sense. So, wow, that this is definitely a great concept that I will be implementing. Um, Steve, Anthony, I know you guys are in the process of updating your content, your websites. Uh, any clarifications on how this applies to you uh, and how you are going to roll this out uh, for your site and execute? You might have to unmute yourselves there manually. Uh, Steve, you're muted. Although your webcam is showing. Oh, <laughs> wrong button. <laughs> no, loving, loving the content. No, no questions right now. Uh, okay. Just, just ranked a new video. <laughs> yes, 
I can see it in the chat. Um, fantastic stuff. Um, <laughs> very, we'll break that down uh, definitely because you know again you guys are like hitting the ground running on this. It's putting a lot of pressure on me to get this rolled out so that we can launch everybody's uh, respective websites. But you know a nice simple editorial calendar. Again, uh, I look at my website as a business, right? Um, I want to have a game plan. I want to take out the guesswork, minimize my risk, ensure that it gets done, and monetize it. All right, so that way there's no confusion. We have a roadmap and a blueprint that we can uh, go ahead uh, and follow. Okay, so that is part one. Getting our um, uh, that is our editorial um, calendar here for everybody. Okay, so next slide. Building the editorial calendar. Dun dun dun. All right, um, <laughs> action item: thirty titles. Okay. Come up with 30 working titles that you can fill your editorial calendar with, right? So here's your headline slash working titles. Okay, why 30? If you're doing it every day, that's a month worth, right? If you're doing it once a week, then you can get ahead and you've got multiple uh, uh, posts planned out for the next couple months uh, given your particular schedule. Now, how are you going to do this? Um, hold on one second. Okay, so in this step, we're going to brainstorm 30 blog titles or posts, or what I like to call, or what everybody references as headlines, and add them to your uh, editorial calendar. All right, split the headlines among the different categories. Okay, and we have a nice little checklist of. Um, hold on, where is that? Where is our headlines uh, little tip let me add that on here here we go so here are some sample headlines that you can use to start to fill in your editorial calendar right so right off the bat we've got 12 that you can pull now these are social proof based headlines um, and uh, they'll vary and basically it's a simple way to act, uh, a simple way to desired result that works for your group person fill in the blanks on there social proof based headlines right and then there's another headline here that uh, we reference or call as threat based headlines uh, sounds intimidating um, but you know not as scary as you think okay um, but they do have some shock factor to it for example why you shouldn't and then do what I desired them to do or do not try another blank until you take blank right so do not try another do not call another party planner until you do this uh, do not talk to a homeowner until you have this questionnaire in front of you all right the ugly truth about um, uh, about social media and what the gurus aren't telling you for example right uh, and then there's one and these are pretty bold uh, I've lied to you <laughs> blank for some time now the biggest lie in your industry so definitely some shock value on there um, we're providing these again as guides so that you can easily pick a headline type it in here uh, and start to fill in your editorial calendar so that you don't get stuck but this should help jog your memory so that you can start to fill in the blanks right um, some people are not motivated by threats or or uh, you know the whole scare tactics or any immediate impending uh, problems uh, m some people are motivate, uh, motivated by gaining something beneficial out of it right so um, there's this section of headlines which we can use and which I'm going to start using to fill in my editorial calendar right um, where blank is and how to get it all right where your motivated sellers are and how to find them um, to people that want to, uh, to parents that want to have the most amazing kids party, but don't know where to start, read on or watch this video. Uh, I was talking to Lauren earlier. She's exploring some cool stuff uh, on YouTube, trying to target different uh, ninja sources for traffic. Okay, and so we were able to talk more about that on how um, you know there's people searching for a certain product or a certain solution alright so before you call another vendor <laughs> try these applications first or apply these marketing techniques before you buy the next marketing course that you see on the internet right or improve increase your opt-in rate in less than a week 
right? How to get five contracts for motivated seller in two weeks or less. Uh, the lazy guide or the lazy blank way to get X. So these are headlines that you can use which are more based around the theme of gaining something beneficial, right? See how you can easily lose weight in 30 days without ever working out eating anything you want right uh, I know that's why I bought the book the eight-hour diet after I read that headline I was like well sh yeah I'm so at that I want to do um, so gaining something okay so these are different headlines that you can use and apply and really so I'll just kinda take you through how to you know this exercise so you can see how it's going to play out um, let's say I've selected all these titles right here I've just you know I've, I've thought about it blah, blah, you know done headlines okay and then in my categories I can rotate my categories right and so now I'm starting to build a you know like a full-on editorial calendar who's gonna do what on what day this plan is fluid it is a template that you can change alright like Lauren asked earlier you know Gil what if we just stick with one theme for the week? Hey, you stick with one theme for the week. Maybe, you know, that theme, um, the concept that you're talking about, you can do a whole week's worth of post on just building your subscribers. You can focus on a certain topic and, and it'll allow you to get the job done. Uh, that's how your brain works. That's how you get, uh, uh, it, it's how you best work, right? It, it matches and complements your style, okay? So start to fill this one in and it gets a whole lot easier right um, Lauren a little bit clear uh, especially for our business clients where you know what they've never created content before um, but you know how's that template uh, looking for everybody is it making more sense now on how this you know how we touched on okay here's like a little one week snapshot and then we continue to build out to have this game plan Oh yeah, uh, this definitely helps, especially all the people that are like, uh, "Why am I blogging when I do reptile parties?" <laughs> you know, and they—it's hard enough trying to wrap them around. Yes, you need to blog because that's important to getting found. So you know, this definitely gives some structure and makes it you know very applicable. Oh, okay, I get why I need to blog. So, and then you're kind of helping and giving. And I haven't even had this format, so very helpful. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we'll keep going on here. Talked, uh, talked a little bit about the topics. Obviously, the more polished the headline, the better. Um, you, this does not have to be perfect, guys. It, does, you know, just, just get a post out, fill it out, and then you can always change it. The whole point is, you wanna, you wanna celebrate and have some small successes. Okay, um, it makes the journey onto having a big website or a formal website more exciting. All right. Um, believe you don't want to get stuck on you know never getting your website up because you never came up with a perfect title. I mean, you know, don't beat yourself up over it, <laughs> right? Um, so fast track, right? I talked about uh, it, we're going to be uh, having some headlines that you can check out and reference and the resources. Um, and again, you know, uh, that way you can uh, fast track and get this accomplished here pretty quickly. Do not try to be a master headline writer. Uh, right out of the get-go. Um, writing great headlines is a critical part of the money blog and income website process. Good headlines boost response. It's as simple as that. And eventually, over time, you will get better at it. But you do have to start and review your results so that you can get to that point where, oh, you know what? I tried that headline. I think this sounds better. You know what I mean? So let's test that out. Let's see what uh, let's see what happens if I change this headline, and uh, you actually have something to mold and to modify, right? Write 30 headlines directly into your editorial calendar spreadsheet under the column headlines, okay? And don't forget to split them up evenly al among the different categories, all right? And the last part, we will put the finishing touches to this editorial calendar. Other ways you can fast start or quick start your way to filling this editorial calendar out is what I like to call the FAQ strategy, frequently asked questions, all right? You can start writing down all of the most frequently asked questions um, uh, that you get about your industry or niche, and you can use these as the main topics okay or uh, or modify that to your particular headline and start to fill in the blank that way alright you can also start filing them in different categories you can go into a forum find out what people are asking compile those questions voila content for the next week 
right? I love it. Easy, quick to do, uh, and pretty straightforward. Okay, next slide, please. Where are we? Do, 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 do. Ah, building the editorial calendar, part three. Adding it to your editorial calendar. We talked about this already, matching the headlines to the category. That way you are in sync. Uh, you definitely want to create a launch date. All right, The official launch date of when this will go live or publishing it. And uh, I am setting a personal goal to have this, uh, have a website up and running. I would say maybe a little later than by the end of next week once we've uh, gone through all of this information and I can apply it uh, myself. I'm right alongside with you guys building this thing out. Okay, so um, definitely matching it to your 30 headlines. Create a nice launch date to hold you accountable. Whether you have an existing website or not, make a note of a date you plan to launch or relaunch your blog. Right? Keep in mind that you're going to be creating 30 pieces of content even before you launch it. All right. If you're unsure, choose a date one month from today. All right. You can adjust the date later if needed. Now, here are a couple other tips to help get you started or if you want to quick start this process. Um, you can backdate 15 headlines. Remember, pre-launch is all about preparing blog for your visitors, getting your house in order, getting the table set, food, the nice silverware, prepping all that good stuff. Part of that is ensuring that there is content in place before your visitors arrive. In this step, use the publish date column on your editorial calendar to backdate and publish 15 of your 30 headlines. Right, space the backdated publish dates out, and that way you'll have a nice little um, buffer in between, and then you can publish the remaining 15 articles after your launch date. All right, you start with 15 articles, place them onto the site, launch the blog, and work on the remaining 15 as you move forward. That's the approach that I'm going to take, I think, in order for me to stay on top of my deadlines. Uh, if you are, uh, we can fast track it. Uh, those that are in our group uh, coaching and our accountability uh, portion of this series, um, there is literally a day one, day two, day three, step-by-step -step template and formula that you, will ha uh, you can follow uh, and implement. So if that's more up to your speed, uh, contact contact the person on this particular blog post or in this YouTube video so we can fast track your program and uh, you can get up and running here um, uh, fairly quickly or as soon as you'd like to, right? Some sooner than later. Okay. Uh, all these other items on there, we talked about that earlier, no need to uh, review it. Um, but once you do fill this thing out, right, then shoot, that's your editorial calendar. We're well on our way to becoming a media mogul, all right, running it like a proper business uh, with a game plan that we can follow, execute. Uh, what are we going for here? We want to get a thousand subscribers, uh, get it to a dollar earnings per subscriber per month. We are going for a 30% opt in rate. 20% click-through rate. Okay, uh, we are starting the blog with 30 working headlines and titles, which would be applied to different categories, the main sections of our website. Okay, so this is going to look different for you if you're in a different market or niche. If you are in the financial journey, uh, how I am building an income generating website, then you probably want to just follow along and implement it so that um, uh, it, it's a smoother transition and um, you got the done for you component uh, taken care of there uh, as well. All right. Um, congratulations, you have a plan. Uh, Lauren, questions? Steve, or are we good on the uh, editorial calendar? I'm good on that. I can yeah, hardly wait to, awesome. sweep, to swipe the file. <laughs> Uh, I'll type that in the link right now. Let me know if you guys can download it. This is the editorial calendar for everybody. If you guys want to see if you awesome. can uh, access the file, uh, and, and oh, Steve, and, and for you in your case, right? You and Anthony, you guys are just blowing through this content like fiends, and uh, and and already have videos. You're producing stuff, so you know I don't want you guys to get burnt out or I want to make sure that there is a laser like focus and a clear chain of thought on how you are building out your first income producing website uh, and your particular blog. Let's start with one website that is income producing and then we can expound and build other blogs from that main one, right? It's like Oprah started with her main brand. I love the Oprah business model. I love Oprah. And so she built her 
uh, her brand, her media company, just just her, right? Everything Oprah based, and then from there she started to you know promote and build up Dr. Phil, Rachel Ray, and some of the other uh, celebrities and uh, known media personalities to date. But it all starts with that one website, that one uh, the one thing that worked. Okay, a model that you can say, hey, this is a system. I can now just apply this, change what's on the front end. Uh, we can apply this in any market in yeah, any niche. Right? So want to make sure that you guys are zeroed in on your content. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, did I miss anything here from the group? So far so good. All right, we're going to keep on trucking here, guys. We're going to keep on trucking. Editorial calendar. Um, once you have your editorial calendar, uh, we've basically addressed the problem of what do I do when? Do I write long posts? Do I write short posts? Or what am I going to talk about? So we now have a plan. If we you know put what on we're the floor, going to do. Wobble. Now we will have, uh, now we can actually start the content creation part, right? Now we can start the content creation part and start to fill in. Um, the uh, the different components and sections of our website. So let's it, we can now create content, right? Now we talked about the 30 headlines. Of course, there's going to be 30 articles to match that, right? Danger. This is a critical point on your uh, journey to producing a income generating website uh, or a money blog. Do not get discouraged. Keep on trucking. Um, for our accountability and our group coaching, we have a done-for-you component with regards to article and content creation. So we wanted to eliminate that factor of you getting stuck and not being able to see success or be able to move forward, right? Um, but definitely stay it, stick with it. It's definitely, definitely stick with it. So I'm going to give you some quick start tips because 30 articles seems a little bit daunting. But like I showed you guys earlier, uh, you will cycle through different people creating the content. So once you start to fill in this calendar, all right, you're going to see. Okay, well, there's definitely certain days where I have to work and and you know create some content, but there are other days where you know what I I don't have to rack my brains. I can simply go online, find five you know three to five great other sites and resources, compile them, and uh, talk about what I think about it. Share my review, analysis, feedback, uh, quirky thoughts, or something random. And then there's on other days where you'll have a guest uh, appear on your site or your blog, and they can provide the content for you. Um, that's another, you know, great perk of our uh, of the group aspect uh, uh, to this, where we have content contributors that would love to jump onto your site, help, uh, you know, help build that brand out there for you, um, and uh, uh, and and produce and create content, right? So, other quick start tips on how you can get content done, and you know, the world, you know, you don't have a burden uh, on your shoulders, and that it is all on you. Okay, so number one, um, again, these are methods you can use to make content creation process easier uh, and a whole lot more fun and exciting. Uh, crowdsourcing, okay, crowdsourcing. You can find three to three to six people that are experts on a certain topic. Send them all the same question. Okay, send them all the same question, and uh, basically you're going to compile all of the answers in a single blog post. Right? You can do this as many, uh, you know, for as many of your posts. Maybe all your posts are going to be, you know, set up that way. Right? Um, or you'll do a couple using crowdsourcing. And that's a pretty cool way to get your content created, right? Uh, you can interview people. We just added the interview component um, to some of our uh, marketing channels, and we're getting great reviews uh, on it, right? So people do like the whole interview feature format. And this is also a great way where whoever you are interviewing can send traffic to you. Right? Um, I mean, they're going to tell their friends and family, loved ones, their their subscribers list. They're going to post it on their fan pages. Hey, I just came out on Lauren's. Uh, you know, I got interviewed by this entrepreneur, Lauren, who is in the financial freedom niche. And uh, you know, check out uh, check out the interview. Let me know what you guys think. And right then and there, if you have no list, you're now using somebody else's list, getting eyeballs on your site and your content. And if you've laid uh, set up the layout correctly, you will have an opt-in box embedded. 
somewhere on that site that is going to capture or allow people to opt into your list. We're also going to explore some advanced stuff where you can properly follow your customers along. Some people have called it the stalking strategy. I'm not quite so excited about the name stalking strategy. Um, <laughs> but uh, there are ways you can literally follow that subscriber all over wherever they go. Uh, you know, up until the point where they subscribe, they buy, um, or they, uh, you know, they, they become a raving fan uh, of yours. Okay. Here's another way you can interview yourself. If you need content fast, write out a set of interview questions that correspond with your blog post headlines and ask a friend or colleague to interview you. Right? Being a part of an active group, you guys can talk to each other, interview one another, or maybe we can interview you and feature you just like we did Andy uh, just the other day. So interviewing yourself. Curating content, I already went over this. Find um, different uh, articles and pieces of information that's already out there, compile them, and um, create a nice little original post out of that, right? Remember, this is one of the vehicles we discussed in the editorial planning stage, so use that, okay? Now, is there a done-for-you component for all this? Like with anything we do, yes, there is. I do believe in outsourcing, virtual assistance, and streamlining the operations, so there will be a done-for-you component. You might want to use outsource writers to create some or all of your content in the pre-launch phase. Okay, um, We do cover the process of finding content creators in depth later in this module. Where are all these people that you can outsource to and get quality work done? So we'll, that will be in the resources later uh, in the module. Okay, um, feel free to skip ahead. Use this information uh, to source contributors in your pre-launch stage. Last but not the least, as you are creating your content, regardless of what vehicle and type of uh, post or content you are creating, I, I do recommend that you work inside of WordPress. Okay, um, I definitely recommend you write your articles in WordPress. You'll find it easier to get your formatting correct. Any italic lines, underlines, bold, um, indents, uh, formatting of the paragraphs and the text. Uh, it's easier to get correct when you type it directly into WordPress. We're going to have instructions on how you can do it and where to access if you need a how-to section um, to help get that done. Um, you could also write your articles on Word uh, in Microsoft Word, Notepad, um, Open Office or Google Docs, right? So you can use any of those and copy paste them into WordPress later on. The danger is that you might end up doing a lot of formatting when you paste it onto Word. So again, two step forward, one step back, you have to redo the content. Uh, get comfortable working inside of WordPress. It's pretty user friendly uh, and they got tons of customer support videos that would help walk you through um, and making sure your content is published correctly and that you can continue to execute. You can continue to execute your editorial calendar. All right, all right, all right. Uh, moving forward. Okay, now other ways you can get content um, and as you move forward with your you know, money blog or your income producing websites, uh, I did want to tie in. Lauren highlighted this last week, uh, but I definitely want to revisit this concept uh, and make sure that you do not forget to, uh, to, to get active on forums uh, and blogs, and, and I'm going to stress why at this point. Um, this is going to help you in a multitude of ways. Part of being uh, uh, you know, a, a, an authority site or a great resource and, and an income producing website is that you are part of the community or niche in which your markets uh, are, are members and actively participating. And we talked about this earlier, how you know, go to where your customers and peoples are hanging out. Right, and so two of the most lucrative communities you can join are forums and blogs. It's also a great way for you to build your subscribers list and start to create a buzz around what you're currently doing. Okay, now many of you are already members of top forums that surround your market. Others will need to find uh, active forums that they can join. Lauren has a nice little step-by-step -step video on how you can find these forums and blogs. Uh, a simple way to do it is to go on Google and perform the following searches. Type in the market or niche and then forum. All right, certain product, forum. Keywords forum. Find at least two to three of those, join them, and start um, 
start participating, answering some questions, and uh, and asking questions as well, right? You want to start out as a student before you come on too strong and turn people off, thinking, well, this person just joined, and all of a sudden they're hogging the airwaves. Um, you don't want to seem like that know-it-all type of person, right? So these are your objectives. Number one, it's good old-fashioned networking. Become a helpful and a thoughtful member of the forum, and you'll be inspired, uh, surprised at the relationships you'll get uh, from it. Um, and where they will lead. They will lead to new opportunities, uh, additional traffic, and uh, credibility. These are also great places to get contact uh, content ideas, right, as you fill in your editorial calendar and start to produce content. Understand the pain points of your market that could be solved through the content on your website. This is where people are ranting, raving, uh, posting their challenges, getting solutions and tips on how to get it done. So this can help you uh, produce content that can be immediately applied. They see the responsiveness. If the tips are quality and they're good, you just gained yourself a subscriber and ultimately, uh, you know, uh, hopefully a paying customer, uh, depending on what you are offering uh, and the way your site uh, is structured. Right. Last but not the least, it'll also give you clues as to offer ideas. Right. Um, when you find out what problems people are having, this will tell you if there's any courses, uh, any products. Uh, a company out there that can help solve their problems. For example, I was consulting for a real estate investor the other day and they were talking about their buyers, a lot of their buyers are credit challenged. All right, So they have a hard time getting financing to purchase their first home due to their credit. Now, knowing that that list, that audience uh, is looking to buy a home but they have some credit challenges, there are credit repair companies that offer affiliate uh, programs where they will send you a marketing fee, referral fee, or you can generate a, an affiliate commission for sending them uh, a client, a customer that they can help and uh, improve their credit, ultimately transitioning into home ownership. So again, these this will give you some ideas on what offers, what products, service companies that you can sell, um, and, and that is relevant, right? You're not just shoving an offer or trying to sell them on a product that has no relevance to their particular situation. All right. So again, forums and blogs. Right. Pretty clear, pretty straightforward. Lauren had a more in-depth session on this, so you can always watch the initial video replays. We will highlight that as we move forward. Now, blogs, very similar. Go on Google, type your market, product, or keyword, and followed by the word blog. You can also go to a website called alltop.com. This is a pretty cool site. Not too many people, uh, especially if they're starting out, uh, are familiar with alltop.com. But alltop.com is like a major, major, major syndicator, um, syndication of what is trending in a number of different riches. Uh, riches, niches, I'm sorry, niches, right? So for example, I can pick a certain category, health, culture, interest, right, or I'll just type something on here. Let's say we are in the video games niche, right? So these are the different uh, results that will pop up. Pick one that most applies to you and then roll with it. But that way, so let's see, gaming popped up. So that's related to uh, video games, right? So I'm going to take a look at gaming. What is trending right now? What are people talking about? Um, uh, you know, there's people talking about Halo coming out, uh, Star Wars, um, Next generation gaming toothbrush. Hey, they might have something that, you know, a hot product that you can sell with an affiliate program that you can sign up for. So, again, all top, um, this tells you what's trending, uh, what people are talking about, and also, again, gives you clues on how you can connect uh, with your particular uh, audience, right? If these blogs are, are trending, if that's the topic that they're talking about, you might want to be talking about something similar, put your spin or your take on that topic or issue um, because that's what people are talking about. That's what the eyeballs, that's what traf That's where the traffic is and you want to redirect some of that onto your particular website. All right, So alltop.com, check it out, play around with it a little bit uh, and that'll help give you clues as to what is trending, what to talk about uh, and um, other content creation. Right? Uh, objectives here, okay. Now when you are connecting on the blogs, right? when you're reaching out to other bloggers, these are the blog sites that are trending and quote unquote the authority. 
All right. These are the blogs that uh, you might want to consider reaching out to. These are the people you can interview, that you can talk to, uh, get some tips from, see what they're doing. Right? Um, whatever they're talking about promoting, it's working. They're staying in business, so you might want to mirror that or uh, try to find the golden nuggets and take the best practices from those sites. So, what are we trying to do when we are uh, connecting or researching blogs and reaching out to them? Uh, you want to connect with the influencers in your industry. The blog owner or the website owner will often be an influential person in your particular niche. Now, if you promote her content and leave thoughtful comments on the blog, you may be able to spark a nice little relationship. Uh, and um, and when you ask for something, you know, hopefully they'll entertain your call, your email, or respond to your request for an interview. Right, but a lot of these websites and blogs are managed by a very small team, uh, or, or like a one-man or one-woman operation, and so it is easy to connect directly with the decision maker um, and uh, connect with your influencers. Right, uh, writers. Okay, writers. Look for writers that could be writing for these authority websites on other blogs. So, for example, let's take a look at this. Uh, the the whole toothbrush thing. That's a pretty fun one, right? That blog is on uh, Kotaku.com, and the article was written by Yannick Lejock, right? So, taking a look at Yannick. Lejock's profile, it looks like he writes about a variety of things. Okay, um, If he's got a whole bunch of articles placed in different websites, um, then you know what? That might be somebody who would be willing to write uh, on our particular blog. That's what he does, right? He provides content. He's a writer. Uh, he's looking for additional exposure. Um, he could definitely, you know, he may appreciate the fact that he can get onto your site uh, and get more of his content and information out there for everybody. Build up his portfolio uh, and his experience, right? Uh, click through traffic. Right, click through traffic. What does this mean? Um, when you consistently leave thoughtful comments on high traffic websites, you'll start to see a fair amount of clicks to your website from those comments. So, for example, uh, let's say here on the website, are there comments? Okay, so there's only one comment <laughs> on this one. So, not a very good example. You obviously want something with, you know what? All replies. Here we go. So, Let's say we're following this particular blog site. When you comment regularly, the person writing that, I mean, they appreciate the kind of stuff. They look for the feedback, clarifications. Do they like it? Do people not like it? What are they saying, right? And you start to become a common name on this person's list. They will see you commenting regularly. And again, it'll allow you to build a relationship with that person. But most importantly, you see all these other users that are leaving comments that are consistently following this blog, they're going to see you leaving comments and hopefully they're thoughtful, nice comments, they're good quality uh, uh, inputs or feedback or suggestions or thoughts that go in there. They're going to get curious, they're going to click on your link, your profile and um, find their way to your website. So traffic from leaving comments, right? Click through traffic. Last but not the least, again, it gives you content ideas and offer ideas uh, for your own particular website. If this blog is promoting this toothbrush, then maybe this could be a very profitable offer uh, that you want to uh, get ahead of and start building up, uh, promoting with your list so that when the product goes live, they'll be able to purchase it since they've been following uh, your content on this particular product, course, niche, or uh, company that you are talking about. All right, um, so getting active on blogs. Again, Lauren does a detailed, detailed version of this in previous sessions, uh, but wanted to make sure um, we link that to our day to day breakdown uh, and process. So let me review what we just went through so that we are all on the same page. We are now in the pre launch. Okay. Rather than stumbling and fumbling, you know, not wondering what's going on, we've come up with a nice little game plan on how often we can post when we can do the posting and what type of content are we going to use. Is it going to be video, uh, who's going to write it and what are we going to be talking about on that day. This template is something you can customize uh, and modify and change depending on how the week went. Right, uh, and uh, just the honest feedback of you know where you are at, and does it fit your schedule? Do you like where this is going? Did you get inspired and you have a new idea that turns out to be better? 
we can change this and you can change it right um, the main objective here is to get a game plan down so that we can follow and we can make those improvements uh, as we go ahead and move forward all right so who uh, talk about a marathon of a session um, I am um, I am good on my end uh, I'm gonna open we still have some people uh, that's logged in and still hanging out with us um, I uh, you know thank you for for hanging out and staying this long if you guys have any questions please type it in so that we can um, we can address some of those questions uh, but for uh, Steve who is catering to our accountability and is uh, is coordinating that group um, how are you guys and girls uh, on this process is it clear on the execution plan um, any clarifications on uh, what needs to happen next with your respective websites yeah yeah could you just go over the the whole thing again oh. <laughs> <laughs> no it's good I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to watch the replay but it was re really really good man you did a good job Awesome. Okay, so if anything, guys, you know, it is going to be a long video replay. Um, you know, the short of it is there's an editorial calendar. We got to fill it in. Um, you know, and, and you definitely want to get this done by, I would say, this weekend or um, definitely before your actual launch, right? Um, Lauren, anything on your end for our business and uh, the group coaching group? I think we're good. All of a sudden, I'm picking up an echo on your end, so I'm not I'm sure. sure. It, it just knew, and now I'm hearing an echo too. Yeah, that's Steve's. Oh, uh, oh. Steve's <laughs> no worries. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, no, we're good to go. It, awesome content. So thank you. Uh, all right, cool. So that should wrap up our content creation. What we're going to create, talk about. What are we going to stock our shelves with? Uh, you know, at our nice little store. Uh, in this case, you know, we've got a website. We want to send people to our website and find quality, good information that would help them, right, uh, uh, move forward. So, what is going to happen next? What are we going to be talking about? Well, now that we know what content we're producing uh, and creating, okay, the next step that we're going to talk about is lead magnets, okay? We're going to talk about lead magnets, and uh, a lead magnet, for those of you that aren't sure what it is, it's an irresistible offer uh, that gives a specific chunk of value to a prospect or to a lead, a subscriber, in exchange for their contact information, usually an email address. So we're going to start to craft our lead magnets um, that we can uh, provide to help build our list, uh, you know, fast and in a in the most effective ways. So we're going to break down lead magnets and we're also going to talk about converting visitors uh, into subscribers. So this is the part that, you know, uh, again, I mean, I love all of this. I love seeing the launch phase and, and it's always, always provides me some good insight um, looking back and going through this, uh, going through the process step by step. Um, but we're going to do some lead magnets and we're also going to talk about how to convert these into subscribers. So we'll answer the questions of where do you place the lead magnet opt-in on the website? Like where are people clicking? Where are most people clicking? What's the most effective way to place it? Do you place it on the top? Do you place it in the middle? Do you place it under the fold on the bottom? Is it a secret pop-up that pops out of nowhere where all you wanted to do was just buy a plane ticket then all of a sudden you got hotels popping up and car rental pop-ups because we see those, right? Um, so we do answer that question. We do tackle that uh, and share our best practices on how to convert these uh, into subscribers. So I'm going to be uh, sharing um, where we're putting it and how we are uh, how we are ninjaing our way uh, into some of uh, some of these subscribers that we are um, we are adding onto the list. Um, so with that, guys, oh, man, awesome session today. Um, <laughs> Gene says, awesome session. Gil head spinning, gotta drop off. Thanks for hopping on, Gene. Uh, definitely check out the replay. Follow the templates to help shorten the learning curves and the time frames. Um, thank you for hopping on. And we always want to, you know, make sure that any, when anybody comes across this, they are able to get a good overview of it. Uh, we don't want you spending the entire month, you know, reading about how to build a website, how to understand what blogging is, right? You can learn all that stuff uh, easily in a day or in one video or in a weekend from the content that we are putting out there. Um, my goal, why, why my, a couple things, right? I'd like for you to, uh, you know, to for those that are looking to build an income producing website, to do just that. Put some money in your pocket, generate a part-time or a full-time 
revenue off of it. And uh, we are also designing a program where you can literally uh, get up and running in, in less than a month, all right, and start seeing traffic and results. Based on what our test group is doing right now in our accountability group, um, they are already generating online and affiliate commissions even without a website. So we want to make sure that you know we can get it dialed down into a system that we can run over and over and over uh, and uh, we're not just stumbling forward um, not knowing what's going on. Right. So if you're not already on our list, thank you for checking our content out. There will be a little opt-in box or contact information. Go ahead and enter your name and email uh, so you can stay on top of the latest tips, strategies, and any changes uh, in our schedule. We will have a new link uh, starting tomorrow is the fourth uh, Monday. So we're going to have a new link. We're going to email that out to everybody so you can access it, join our sessions live. We're going to find a solution to make it easier for people to log on to these sessions. Uh, but a new invitation link will go out to the group. Do not worry. That will be made available. All right. Um, so Lauren, any last uh, thoughts, feedback, words, updates from you before we jump off of our session? Nope. I'm good to go on my end. Excellent, excellent. So very good. Awesome. And um, from our accountability group, uh, Steve, any clarifications, anything urgent on your end? You are uh, coordinating our, um, our accountability group and everybody that's going to roll this out. You are like the uh, representative speaker mayor. <laughs> vote, vote for Steve. <laughs> no, all good. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, so with that, guys, thank you so much for hopping on. And um, we will see you on the next live session. We go live tomorrow at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Fridays. If you like what you saw, leave us some comments, feedback, suggestions, and um, hopefully we'll see you live on our next session, which I trust we will uh, since we're getting into the extra good stuff on lead magnets and uh, how to convert them into subscribers, paying subscribers. Subscribers, um, so that that I am exceptionally excited about. Uh, this addresses and and really touches on what Lauren was saying on how you can generate regular monthly uh, income uh, from the site, and um, you know touching on the topic of passive income as well. Okay, so on behalf of uh, Steve, Lauren, Gill, and everybody else that is on these sessions, uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next live session. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye bye.